Hey, welcome to Mono Network, and today I have a topic for you guys. Should you get a sport bike or should you get a dual sport or a supermoto? So obviously there are advantages to owning a sport bike and a dual sport as your first motorcycle. Myself personally, let me just give you a quick, quick, quick little rundown of uh, the bikes that I had and why do I think the way I do currently. So my first motorcycle was the 2001 Yamaha R6. When I got that bike, I didn't even have license to ride a motorcycle. So I got that bike and I had the previous owner ride it to my place where I brought it up to my apartment and it was just sitting in my living room for probably a month or so until I got my license. When I got my license, I started practicing. I essentially brought the bike downstairs and right across from the apartment building that I lived in, there was a parking lot. So I just brought my bike over there and uh, just, I remember I had the uh, few empty bottles. I just filled them up with the water, lined them up, used them for, uh, you know, those orange cones and just started practicing, like, you know, slow speed maneuvering. I remember I watched a whole bunch of videos on how to ride a motorcycle and just like, theoretically, I knew how to ride it. It's just practically, I had absolutely no experience of riding one. So I brought my bike to that parking lot and I started practicing until I was comfortable. And then after that, I took my uh, tests uh, to acquire a motorcycle license. And then after that, I got my license started riding. Um, after I had my R6, I uh, sold it approximately, I would say five months later, give or take. And then I got the uh, 2004 Kawasaki ZXXR 636. It was a fuel injected bike. Uh, that, by that time, I already knew a little more than I did when I got my R6 about the bikes. So uh, I wanted to get a fuel injected sport bike and I just loved the ways they sounded. Not even the looks, it was all about the sound. I just, I absolutely adored the, the sound of the inline four engine, how they screamed up top. So I had that bike and I absolutely loved it, like, uh, every little bit of it. I rode it on a daily basis, that was my only daily driver type thing. Uh, the reason I sold the ZXXR was essentially that I'm no I started noticing that I'm becoming more and more aggressive on the street. Meaning that I, I'm, I was at the point where I was getting more and more comfortable with the way I was riding the uh, sport bike and I was comfortable with the power that it had and I knew the physics and dimensions of the bike so well that I started pushing myself and more and more and more and I started noticing that, you know, when I'd come back home and just sit there thinking like, how am I still even alive after the way I rode? So, at that point I uh, stumbled across a channel of uh, Jake the Garden Snake and he was actually, uh, I remember he made a video on how much super, how much better the supermotors are compared to the sport bikes, you know, for everyday riding. Essentially it's a motorcycle that can do it all. So uh, I went on Craigslist and quite naturally I found a uh, 2000, I believe it was 7, DRZ 400 SM in yellow color. and. Uh, yeah, I texted the guy and then next thing you know, we're, uh, we met up. He liked my bike, I liked his bike. We rode it to the insurance place and we traded. As simple as that. Going back to the topic, whether you should get a 600 or a dual sport, I think you should get a dual sport or a supermoto. Supermoto is even better because you, you can still learn the basics of you know, cornering and everything that you'd be doing on a sport bike. Essentially, dynamics are about the same. It's still a motorcycle. Yes, it is softer. Yes, you know, sometimes you gotta deal with it and handle it a little bit differently than say a uh, sport bike. But overall, it's a really great platform to learn on. So that's why I think you should get a uh, supermoto. Supermotos are fun, dude, and you can wheelie them like nothing. I'm still learning, obviously, but. These are very capable bikes, so yeah. These are the reasons why you should get a uh, DRZ instead of, or like any supermoto for instance, instead of a sport bike as a first bike. Obviously, if, you, if you're like me and you like the looks of a sport bike and you like the way they perform, the speed and everything, by all means, go ahead and do that. But trust me, you're gonna be more careful with the sport bike than than the uh, supermoto. With a supermoto, I give you two months. After two months of just learning the basics of motorcycle riding, I guarantee you, you're gonna be full throttling this bike everywhere you go, and you're still gonna be under the speed limit. 
quite simply, I would say that it is a better idea to buy a dual sport like, for example, the TRZ 400 SM. These bikes are reliable as tanks. Like you don't have to do anything to, you know, keep them running. Like obviously you got to do, you know, regular maintenance and stuff and such. But I mean, that that's essentially it. Like you don't have to do anything else. They're not like KTM's. You know, there, there's a saying K, KTM stands for keep throwing money. And that's not the case with the DRZ and it's really forgiving and there are tons of videos on YouTube as to why you should get a uh, you know supermoto as opposed to sport bike and they're a lot more fun because you can do stuff with them that you would think three times uh, before doing on a uh, sport bike honestly when you start on a sport bike you just got to take into consideration the power and responsiveness of that motorcycle like if you're gonna get a sport bike you got to be ready to baby the throttle like you know and same same applies to the brakes you don't want to be slamming on brakes you don't want to give it you don't want to be giving full throttle to the motorcycle you know on slightly wet surfaces stuff like that it's just you got to be s smart about it i mean recently motonocity uploaded a video where he was um essentially saying that he does not recommend to start on either 600 cc class motorcycle or a thousand cc motorcycle those bikes have so much power that you just don't need it but with a supermoto you can ride it and nobody's gonna judge you for being on a supermoto as a matter of fact there are a lot of guys right now that are still looking for a supermoto you know and I, I personally know a guy who's coming from a 2009 R1 and uh, he's just uh, I wonder if this goes anywhere He's coming from 2009 R1 and uh, he had a DRZ before and currently he's looking he's looking to sell or trade his uh, uh, R1 for a KTM EXT 500 Supermoto. Okay, this is really soft. <sighs> really shouldn't be here. The good thing about Supermoto is that you can take it anywhere. It's essentially the bike that can do it all. So you can ride on the street and be, you know, on par with the sport bikes if you're riding something bigger than 400. Or, you know, if you're tired of riding off, I mean, on road with the sport bikes, you can always take it to the uh, off-road section and just, you know, go on little jumps and wheelie and practice doing stuff and just becoming a better motorcyclist. Holy shit, there was a lot of glass on the fucking ground. That's the end of the road. If you liked today's video, make sure to smack that like button. Give us this, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Moto Network for more Moto content. Until then, see you guys later.